What if I told you that it was possible to come across a fondant that was super easy for cake decorating, tasted delicious compared to, you know, the not so delicious fondants that you find at the supermarket, and was super easy to make, so only needed three ingredients? Well, stay tuned because in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make super delicious and easy marshmallow fondant. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel Cakes by MK. So yes, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some easy marshmallow fondant today. And yes, you actually do use marshmallows to make this fondant, which is why it tastes great compared to, you know, normal fondant that is pretty, you know, not so nice from the supermarkets. And what I love the most about this uh, fondant is that it's really easy to use. So it's nice and soft when you know, you're kind of kneading it and, you know, rolling it out to cover your cake, but it sits nice and firmly as well. So it's super reliable. So yeah, let's get right into the recipe. So to make this super easy marshmallow fondant recipe, all you're going to need is some icing sugar, some white marshmallows, and some water. And that is pretty much it. And I will have the full quantities to all these ingredients in the description box below. And the quantity that I'm making today is going to give you just over one kg of fondant. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to melt my marshmallows in the microwave. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in the microwave for 30 second bursts at a time, giving it a mix with my spatula in between each burst until it's completely melted and you'll know that it's melted when there's no lumps in it and it also kind of puffs up a little bit as well. And I'll show you what that looks like once I'm done. So I've just taken my marshmallows out of the microwave. It was in there for a minute 30 altogether. And as you can see, it's kind of puffed up up the top there. And as I mix it, just be really careful also because marshmallows are super sticky when melted. But as I'm mixing it, you can see that it's nice and kind of smooth in there. There are a few little lumps, but my mixture is quite hot. So those should just kind of melt away as I give my marshmallows a little mix. So I've given my marshmallow a little mix. And as you can see now, it's nice and smooth. So there's no kind of, you know, lumps in it. So I'm going to pop it aside for now while we move on to the next step, which is sifting our icing sugar. Now you do want to make sure that you sift your icing sugar because this is going to remove any lumps so that our final fondant is nice and smooth and doesn't have any lumps in it. Now, once your icing sugar is nicely sifted, the next step is to add our melted marshmallows and water to our bowl with our icing sugar in it, and then just give that a little mix with our spatula. I absolutely love marshmallows, and these marshmallows smell so good right now. <laughs> and now I'm just going to start folding the icing sugar into my marshmallows. And I'm kind of doing this in a circular motion so that my marshmallows don't kind of stick to the sides of the bowl and I'm getting as much of it into my flour as possible. Now, once your marshmallows are mostly covered with the icing sugar, then the next step is to simply get our hands and start kneading this mixture until we form kind of like a dough. Now, to stop the mixture from sticking all over my hands, I'm just using a little bit of shortening to rub on my fingers and then I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a dough. Now, when you're first mixing this, it is going to seem quite crumbly, but just keep kneading and I promise you it will come together. Okay, now once you've got one whole piece like that, then what you want to do next is just pop your bowl aside. Just clean up the little area in front of you. And then you basically just want to keep kneading your fondant now until we reach the right consistency. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that point. Now, a quick tip for you guys when kneading fondant is to actually use the palm of your hands to kind of knead into the fondant as opposed to your fingers. And this is going to help it come together more quickly and you're not going to get as tired doing it. Oh, 
Okay, so I think my fondant is all ready now. So you know your fondant is done when you've got it, you know, in one nice shape like that. So it's not kind of, you know, crumbly and falling apart. And another key thing is that, you know, you can kind of move it around in like kind of different ways without it breaking. So it's got that elasticity to it, which we need for a fondant. And this is what it looks like when I break my fondant away. So it kind of has a bit of stretch to it and then it just kind of comes off. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that fondant is sensitive to the weather. So if you're staying in a humid climate, then you might find that even with the quantities that I've given below for this recipe, you might find that your fondant is still a little bit sticky and it's not kind of, you know, at the right consistency. So all you need to do is add a bit more icing sugar and just keep doing that until you reach this kind of nice doughy consistency that you need for your fondant. And, you know, alternatively, if you stay in a cold climate and you find that the quantities below are, you know, giving you more of like a dry and tough fondant then what you can do is just add a little bit more water so I'd only add maybe like half a tablespoon at a time and then just keep kneading it until you get to the right consistency so you do kind of you know have to use a bit of your intuition when making um, fondant as well but that's basically it so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you guys how you would store this fondant how you would color it and I'm going to do a really quick demonstration showing you guys how I cover a styrofoam cake with this fondant as well because I love this fondant recipe so much that I want to show you just how amazing it is to cover your cakes now to store this fondant it's super easy all you need to do is grab some cling wrap just wrap it around your fondant just make sure that it's really well covered so I like to just do maybe like two or three rounds and then simply store it in an airtight container So just like that, and this will basically go into the fridge if you're not using it straight away, and it'll last in the fridge for quite a while. So, you know, maybe up to about two months or so. And when you're going to use it, just make sure that you pull it out of the fridge, maybe, you know, the day before or a couple of hours before you're going to use it to allow it to come to room temperature. And then you'll just need to re knead it a little bit. Just make sure you don't over knead your fondant because you can dry it out that way. But yeah, basically just re knead it again until you've got the right consistency and then your fondant is good to go. Now, now when it comes to colouring your fondant, that is super easy as well. This fondant holds colour really well as well, which is super great. So what you want to do is just grab a little bit of your fondant and flatten it out. Now you can use gloves to prevent the colour from getting onto your hands or another option is just to rub a little bit of shortening on your hands as well. And this just kind of acts as a barrier to prevent the colouring from staining your hands. And then all you want to do is just get a tiny, tiny bit of gel color. So I'm just going to maybe even just dab it because I've only got a little bit of fondant here. And then you simply want to fold the fondant inwards so that it's kind of covering the gel color. And then basically just kind of work it in after that. And about after a minute, I'm left with this beautiful purple fondant. And it's a beautiful color too. And I literally only use like a tiny bit of this purple color. I didn't even use a drop. I just used like a tiny dab. So if you did use even a drop, you'd get even a darker, you know, color to your fondant. So yeah, that's basically how you color fondant. Super easy. And you'd just store this in exactly the same way as I stored this big version. If you're not using it straight away, just wrap it in some glad wrap, pop it into an airtight container and into the fridge. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you guys is I'm going to quickly show you how I would cover a styrofoam cake with this fondant. I'm just going to do this super quick, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but do let me know in the comment section below if you do any more in-depth tutorial on how to cover a cake using fondant. So I'm just gonna start off by putting a little bit of icing sugar down to prevent my fondant from sticking to my table. And now I'm just going to put a little bit more shortening on my fingers to prevent my fondant from sticking to me. <laughs> now I do have quite a bit of fondant over here. I don't think I'm gonna need all of it, so I'm just gonna break some of it off. And just make sure that your fondant is always covered when you're not working with it, otherwise it's going to dry out and it's just going to be a bit harder to kind of knead back together. Now, because my fondant has been sitting for a little while, I'm just going to re-knead it a little bit. What I really love about this fondant too, compared to store-bought fondant, is that it's so much easier to knead because of the soft marshmallows in it. So yeah, definitely less of kind of a workout, I would say. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my large rolling pin to roll out my fondant.
And as I'm rolling it, you can see just how beautifully smooth this fondant is. Now I'm just going to roll the fondant onto my fondant roller. Now before I place the fondant onto my styrofoam cake, I'm just going to quickly rub it with some of my shortening which I've got, which is going to help my fondant stick to my styrofoam cake. So now that it's nicely covered with that shortening, I'm just going to go ahead and put my fondant over my cake. And this is what I absolutely love about this fondant is that I've just put it on but the sides are still kind of holding without me having to kind of quickly try and grab them before they kind of break off because that is kind of a sore point when you know dealing with fondant cakes. And now I'm just going to quickly go around and secure that top edge because I mean you know even though it didn't break I don't want to show off and it ends up breaking so you know you still want to make sure that you know you're kind of doing the right things. And now I'm just using my hands to start working that fondant down to cover my cake. And now I'm just using my X-Acto blade to cut off the excess on the bottom. Now your leftover fondant, you can just kind of knit it back together into a ball and then just wrap it in Glad Wrap and put it in your airtight container. And now I'm just going around and smoothing out the cake with my cake scraper. And now I'm just working on some sharp edges. So I've got me some nice sharp edges now, so I'm just going to do one last little smooth out of it. And that is it. That is my styrofoam cake covered beautifully in marshmallow fondant. It didn't take me long at all to do. Super easy to work with. I am not actually that great at fondant, guys, I will admit it. But with this marshmallow fondant, it makes me feel like a bit of a pro. So I hope it makes you guys feel like that as well. Now, one last thing is you can also turn this fondant into a modeling clay. So let's say you're making, you know, figurines or something like that for a cake where you need it to sit quite firmly. All you need to do is just add some CMC or Tylos powder into your fondant, just knead that in and then you're good to go. And I will add in the description box below the quantity of CMC or Tylos powder that you need to add into this fondant to turn it into a modeling clay. And that is basically it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to make this super easy and delicious marshmallow fondant. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this and thanks again for watching Cakes by MK.